So welcome everybody, welcome to a new Human Experience podcast. Today is April the 7th, 2022. The topic for this evening is abundance. And um, I want to start off by, by saying that I, I've been feeling this imbalance within myself for a while now. And, um, but somehow, like, I, it seems like I try to, I've tried to make m- many attempts to balance myself, but somehow it, it didn't seem to work um, out too well for me. So that's why I am again focusing on it this time. And I think this time, because I've been doing it kind of on my own for a while to try to balance myself and and this time so I want to actually have some outside help to to balance myself and that's why I have um, really looked around to see who else in my like that I know of that already seem to be um, I mean I don't I don't claim to know somebody so well that I know for sure that they've got it all figured out. But it seems like they they have figured things out for themselves. And there are a few um, there are a few people that I can choose from, but it's this one person that I finally um, wanted to to learn from um, one because he he actually put up material that is accessible for me to um, guide myself um, with his with his assistance as well. So so that's why I want to talk about this topic of abundance. It's for me abundance is not. It's about having enough. It's about having or ha- having more than enough. It's also about being balanced as well. And I think it's more of this, this idea of balance that I really found out that it's, it's, it's because I don't have enough experience in balancing my own world that's why certain things keep coming up to throw me off balance so um the the person I just want to to give a shout out to the person that I'm um looking at to assist me in 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 getting on this journey uh, is Jason Estes and he actually put out a series of um, on YouTube on his YouTube channel, which is MTVO Team, his YouTube channel. And the playlist is called the Wealth Series. So it's, it's I didn't want to call this wealth because somehow wealth just didn't sound um, as close to what I have in mind. So that's why I chose abundance to for for this, um, and then this abundance that I want to look into. And um, if you, any one of you are interested in actually hearing it from him, because uh, I'm going to talk something very similar to what he is doing on the Wealth Series. is It's not that I want to repeat everything that he has done, but actually I want to, it's more like I digested his material and I and also I want to um, put my own, how I apply it to my own situation on it. And so it's it may be helpful to, if you're interested to go and listen to his version of it as well. So that's, uh, so it's the MTVO team and it's the playlist is the Wealth Series. So here we go. 
the the first in the in the series is really talking about resources. So each person, we have our own resources. And he has it that we have four primary resources that everybody has, every human being has. So the, um, the first one is life force. And um, so I'm just going to give the four primary resources first, and I'll go into details um, afterwards. So, so the first resource we everybody has is life force. And then the second one is money. The third one is value point. And I would explain what, what um, value point is um, later on. And then the fourth one is time. We, so time is kind of self-explanatory. So, okay, so that's, that's the four primary resources. So the first one I, I want to go back to, to talk about is life force. Life force, my understanding of it is that life force is really energy to do work. So we all have energy and um, to do work. And when I say work, I don't mean, actually mean um, as in working in a job kind of work. To do work meaning to, to, to be active, to, to do things that we want to do. It could be, work could be as simple as smiling or just walking or just um, waking up in the morning or singing. So, so that kind of things. So it's really about energy to, to be active. So that's really life, what life force is. And life force has a lot to do with um, the, 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 the state of our health. The healthier you are, the more life force you have. And life force, is we we are not not all of us are given the same amount of life force. Some people are just naturally more energetic, and some people are just naturally um, less than energetic for whatever reason. So, and some of the the reasons may be due to our health, and we each. Um, we're born in a certain blueprint of health. And some just seem to be easier to bounce back and to, to stay healthy. And someone needs to um, really work hard at keeping themselves healthy. So that's my understanding of life force. Other things I want to mention about life force is that life force is something that it's relatively, um, it's, it's relatively easy to replenish ourselves, no matter how spent or how tired you may be one day. Um, if you get the um, right kind of sleep or if you, um, you know, eat the right food for your own body type, you, when you take care of yourself, then you can always replenish your life force. And so the next day you would once again be able to start fresh as, uh, as fresh as, as if you uh, were never tired to begin with. So in this way, life force is relatively um, easy to replenish. Um, however, that is, all relative because a life force to a young person may be something that they take for granted, but to somebody who is older um, and they have, um, especially if they haven't taken good care of themselves, then they really, life force is not something that they, they would feel that there's re uh, so much that is a renewable resource. They may feel that that is some sort of a, a limited resource. So I just want to throw in that life source is, life force is kind of, um, it's renewable, but it's all relative because it may be very much renewable for some people and not so much for others. So, and also life force is something that is, um, 
dependent on your state of mind as well. If you are vibrant and you're happy, go lucky, or if you're a very passionate person and you're do, doing something that you really enjoy doing, then you, your life force just seems to be inexhaustible. Whereas if you're um, working at doing something that you don't naturally want to do, um, or if you're not, you know, you're just in not the right mood, then everything just becomes harder. Um, your life force could be very much um, not under your own control when, if your own state of mind is um, not in the right state of mind. Let, let, let me put it that way. So in that way, life force is something that is um, dependent on a, a lot of things as well. So that's, that's kind of what I have to say about life force. And the next one I want to talk about is money. So money is, is a resource that is, um, it's an agreed upon value, meaning that it's not something that we each determine on our own. It's something that is collectively as a society, we determine um, each each nation may have its own currency, and so, and then and then from one country to another, that there is this um, agreed upon relative value of of their own money. So, money has that kind of um, peculiarity to it. Is that it's something that is agreed. It has an agreed value. And some of the other things that's peculiar about money is that it, it's, it's something that you can store, maybe even hoard. So it's um, unlike some of the other um, resources that we have, like life force is not something that we can actually store it so much. But money is something that can be stored, and it, and, and so I think that's something that's peculiar about money in terms of our primary resources. Um, I look at it as a medium for trade. So money, of course, also applies to precious metal and, and things that we can use to barter as well that can be kind of considered as money as well. And that's all I want to say about money. And the third one is value points. So a value point is, is expertise in um, the, an area that you want to, to play in. For example, um, let's say I can really do a, a very, um, good meditation, for example. So in terms of meditation, then, then my value point may be much higher than someone else who has never done a meditation before or someone um, who is just, you know, don't even know what meditation is. Uh, and also, let's say somebody who is a computer whiz. So in terms in the field of computer, they have higher value point. Whereas if they, uh, they, they have absolutely um, no standing if they want to be an actor or an actress. So that's, that's what value point is, is really expertise in certain areas. So, and it's, value point is something that you can, increase. So let's say if I want to really get good at my meditation so that, you know, no matter how much of a, a novice you are or how um, scattered a person is, I will still be able to um, make them, you know, guide them into the deepest meditation they have ever had. And they would reach nirvana just by listening to my meditation. 
I can really hone my own <clears throat> ability to guide people into meditation. And if I can actually, you know, just by listening to my meditation can guide people to Nirvana, then, you know, I can actually um, charge a lot of money for people to, like, for people who want to go into, to, to experience Nirvana, to just, you know, come to my meditation. And I can, you know, charge thousand dollars or however much it is that people are willing to pay to experience nirvana so that's just an example so that's what value point is so and um, what i'm trying to say is right now i may not be able to do that i may not be able to just you know in in five ten minutes meditation be able to mix uh, guide somebody to experience nirvana but you know one day who knows maybe in two years time i would be able to i'm i may be able to do that i can guide that so that would be so if that is something that i really wanted to do then i would um spend my time to really um get good at being able to say the right words to the person, any person, in order to um, give them the experience that they want. So I can take classes, I can experiment and, and um, get, like, like do meditation often and, and really be very creative in order to get that experience so that I can get to the point where it's only gonna take me five minutes to get somebody into ex being able to experience Nirvana. So a value point is something that you can increase and learn and, and, and actually increase your own value point. And there really is um, no ceiling on how high your own value point may be. So it's really up to how much time, how much effort you want to put in to increase your own value point. So that's something that is peculiar to, or something that is um, specific to value point in that value point is something that we can work on to increase. And so that's all I want to say about value point. And then the last one is time. So time is a limited resource. Um, it's actually a resource that we don't really know. We, nobody is guaranteed that we have a certain amount of time. No one, there's no guarantee about that. All we have is now, is this moment. And no one knows what's, whether we'll still be here in the next moment. Um, most of the time we, we kind of take for granted that we'll be here tomorrow. However, I think um, life has, has taught us that, well, yes, most of the time it may be true, but there's no guarantee. So. That's, that's why time is probably the, the most um, limited resource that we have. Just nobody knows how much time we have and there is no guarantee how much time we have. And so it's just that most of the time we don't, we're not taught to value our own time unless you um, unless you are, but, well, some people are, are really taught that and really, really know that their time is valuable, but most people um, don't have the feeling that their time is valuable. And so time is, is something that, um, something to rethink how we use our time. So that's, that's all I want to talk about in terms of time. So the four resources are life force, 
money, value point, and time. So those are our four primary resources. And why is it important to know the resources that we have? It's because if you feel somehow that, um, if you feel that, if you feel something that you don't want to feel, to feel or you don't enjoy feel, feeling, if, um, for example, if I get triggered by somebody saying something or, uh, or a situation that triggers me, so I'm, I'm feeling some things that I, I really don't enjoy feeling or don't want to feel. And when usually when I, when I'm, I am triggered, it's because somehow one of those four resources that I have is out of balance. And when, when I'm not in balance, then this feeling of being triggered, um, my body would tell me, my, my emotions would tell me, I don't have to think too hard. It's just something that is, it's, it's really a part of us. We have this, this internal guidance to let us know when we are out of balance. So when we get triggered, um, when we feel feelings that we don't um, normally choose to feel, then we know that something is out of balance. It could be any one of those or, or, or more than one of those. So when we are out of balance, then we have to um, get ourselves back in balance again. Why? Because the universe really seeks balance very naturally. The, the universe seeks balance naturally. That's why when we are out of balance, we know it right away. We may feel tired. We may feel feelings that make us feel uncomfortable or we may feel, um, for example, um, having allergies or those things. So whether it is something that is physical or something that is emotional, when we are out of balance, we would know, our body would let us know, our emotions would let us know. And it's important that we, pay attention to those and, and make an effort to balance ourselves. Because if we don't balance ourselves, then the universe is going to assist you in balancing out yourself. So usually when the universe has to balance you, meaning someone else, something outside of you will come. Um, come, you will attract something outside of yourself to come and balance you out. So usually when that happens, it's not the, um, it may not happen at the, the best time. It may not happen in the, the best of circumstances. So that's why when you go and um, choose to balance yourself, that is usually the, you are in control. And you, it's, you can guide the process much better than when something outside of you is going to attract certain events in your life in order to assist you in balancing that out. So that's why it's important to notice when we are out of balance and do the work to balance it out. And yeah, because there are two ways to balance. Either you do it within yourself or um, you unconsciously cause things to happen to you, cause people to come into your life or other events to force or, or force a situation for you to balance it out. It may not happen right away. Mm -hmm. It may be, it may take a, a couple of months, it may take a couple of years, but eventually 
whatever it is that's out of balance has to be balanced. That is part of the, 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 the universe seeking balance naturally. That, that's kind of how energy works. Energy works to, there is, um, energy really seeks to balance out. So when there is an imbalance and you know about it because your body would tell you, and if you don't do something about it, then the, the universe will cause something to assist you to get to balance. Um, so why is it also important to, to become balanced? Why does the, the universe seek balance? It's because that's how the universe um, assists you into learning. We are here to learn. We, we come into, we come into um, this dimension in order to, to learn to have experiences. So that's why there are certain things that are built into this dimension for us to kind of accomplish our, uh, our goal to experience is. And so that's kind of built into the way it is. And also when you actively take part in balancing yourself, that is how you learn about who you are because you need to know, you need to be, in order to be balanced, you have to be honest with yourself to really know where you're at and ask yourself the, 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 the questions that um, would facilitate you to, to get into balance. So yeah, when you feel this imbalance, you have to ask yourself, um, is, are you the kind of person that tends to give too much or are you the kind of person that likes to take? So if you are the kind of person that likes to, in, in general, likes to take, then the imbalance more likely than not is that you need to give more. And also the opposite is true as well. So people who likes to give, they, it's easier for them to um, find the balance if they learn how to receive more. So, we, so being honest with ourselves and asking those questions to kind of um, figure out what it is that's out of balance. Um, what did, how did we can contribute to our own imbalance? Asking those questions, those tough questions is, is going to assist us to get back into balance. In the coming weeks, I'll talk more in, about, you know, how to balance ourselves, but I'm just giving the, the kind of the the, 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 the the higher level ideas first. The other thing is that um, you really are the only one who can figure out how to balance yourself or whether you are balanced or not, because um, other people may not be able to, to tell you whether you are balanced or not. Because what's balanced to one person may be um, out of balance for another. Everyone is unique. So that's why it actually works much better if you seek, if you do this yourself, because the chances are if someone else or something else has to um, like balance things out, then it actually may trigger uh, uh, um, another, a different kind of imbalance. So it's better that you take the time to, 
to balance yourself because only you can tell whether a situation is balanced as far as you are concerned or not. I'm giving you an example. Let's say, um, yeah, okay, what's a good example? Let's say, um, so somebody, let's say somebody um, give me a call and they, they, they want me to help them with, um, you know, sorting them out. Just, just helping them uh, through a situation, and okay, of course, I, I, I was able to do that. And then the next time I see them, they may decide to buy me lunch, and that may be in their mind. Uh, that may be how they want to balance it out. But in my mind, maybe I feel that oh, <clears throat> like only I can can tell whether I feel balanced or not. I may feel that, oh, this lunch is just absolutely wonderful. I may feel that, oh, what did I do to deserve that? Or I may feel that, what? I was just bending over backwards for this person to help them solve their issue. And all they did was buy me lunch. So <clears throat> they, the person, someone outside of me cannot really tell me whether that is like we have a fair exchange or not. Only I would be able to, to say to, to say yes, I feel that that's a fair exchange or not. And of course, it's up to me to do something about it if I don't think it's a fair exchange. So so that's that's one of the that's an example that I can give in a way that um, only you can tell whether something is balanced, meaning that. It's a fair exchange or not. And, um, and, and, the, and the reason why um, it has to be a fair exchange because when the exchange is fair, then there's no resentment. Whereas if you, if, if you constantly deal with people who don't give you a fair exchange, then you build up this resentment within yourself that is going to course, that's going to um, create attention within yourself. You may feel that, oh, okay, you get to the point where, well, everybody's going to take advantage of me. So I'm just going to pack up and you know, go to a different country, for example. So that may be the way that you're going to balance, you think, to balance it out. But, you know, it could be that if you don't get at that balance within yourself, then no matter where you go, even if you move to a different country, you, you are taking that um, scenario with you. So no matter where you are, you can't escape that. Somehow you would feel people in the new country is uh, still taking advantage of you because the, the imbalance is within you. So you are going to take it with you no matter where you go. So when you take the time to find out why you feel this imbalance and really look at and figure out ways to balance yourself and to kind of ask so, so is it because of life force because I use too much I put up too much energy or because I put up too much money or because I um I took too much I put up too much effort to increase my value point or I, I put so much time in it that I don't give myself time to do the other things that is going to bring joy in my life so you you need to ask yourself these questions and when you figure out which of the the four resources the primary resources and that is out of balance and you take action whether that action could be as simple as just sitting down and um 
adjusting your own thinking. It could be as simple or as complicated as that. Or it could be just um, learning to be comfortable with saying no. Because if people are taking too much of your time and you don't have time for yourself to do the things that's important to you because you don't feel comfortable saying no to other people, then nobody knows this. You are the one that has to, to know this and really um, honor yourself enough to be okay with feeling awkward to say no. And the more you honor your own requirements um, to, to balance yourself, it actually makes it easier for other people to balance themselves out as well. So when you do the work, then in, you are not um, encouraging other people to use you as one of their, the tool to balance themselves. So when you, when you do this for yourself, you also assist other people as well. So And the best part about balancing is when you get to the point where you are comfortable and you're able to balance yourself very easily, um, then actually uh, the one, two, two things would start to happen is that you would feel comfortable sharing yourself with other people because you have you really have mastered um, the give and take. You have mastered your own ability to balance yourself, to balance your all your own resources. You get to the point where you um, feel comfortable to ask for what you want and to say no if it really mean, if you really mean no. And if you are able to do all of those things, then sharing with other people becomes a joy. Because every time you share, every time you give something, you know that you're going to receive the um, what is um, balance, um, what is fair exchange for yourself, because you have done the work of making sure that you that would happen and because you have made the the mental change to be comfortable saying no to be comfortable asking for what you're worth to be comfortable and um and knowing your own value so when you are balanced in all of this then you don't mind sharing because every time you put out you know that you're going to get back whatever it is that is balanced for you. So sharing would become easy and simple and joyful. And the other thing is that because you are able to balance yourself, the universe knows that if I, um, so this person can handle themselves, so they would be, the universe will bring you more opportunities because the universe knows that you would be able to handle more opportunities because you are balanced yourself. So that is the, the benefits of doing your own inner work to balance yourself and not wait for the universe to cause something to happen to, to you know, kind of balance the, the, the whole ledger. And that's all I want to talk about um, for this for this first episode to kind of introduce the importance of balance as especially in relationship to abundance. Because when you are not balanced within yourself, it does not matter how much 
um, resources you of one resource you may have. You may have lots, like some people may have lots of money, but they don't they don't have balance in terms of life force or they may not have balance in terms of time. So to be able to have balance in everything, in all of your primary resources, when you can do that, it's actually much easier for you to feel that abundance, that you have all the resources that you need in order to live life on your own terms. So that's what abundance to me mean that um, whatever it is that life may throw at me, because I already have that uh, ability to balance myself, I'm okay to handle what life throws at me. So that in itself is an abundance. It's and also the other things I want to repeat is that um, balance is an inside job. No one can tell you that that's, that's balance. And if someone else tells you that, oh, they give you a hundred dollars. Oh, that's, that's good. That's balance. It's not for someone else to tell you what is or is not balance. It is really you that has to um, make that judgment call because a hundred dollars may be balanced for someone else not necessarily for you maybe it's too much maybe you're charging too much and when you're charging too much you actually you have to live up to certain potential so so actually you have to um put up more resources in order to, to make yourself feel like you deserve that $100. So that's, that's why um, balance is an inside job. It's not something that someone can tell you that, oh, this is balance. No, nobody can tell you that. You have to know who you are, where you're at, and within yourself, um, feel that balance or not. And also empower yourself to take action in order to balance yourself. So it's an inside job. And that the universe would naturally seek balance. If you don't create that balance within yourself, then the universe will bring events, people to you that either um, show you that you're out of balance so that you can start to get back into balance. So the universe may arrange different scenario in order to create that balance. It may not happen right away, but it will happen because that's the natural way the universe works. And also the, the perks of doing the balancing work is that you will start to feel the joy of being able to share. And also you would get more opportunities as well because you've done the, the you, you've made the, you've mastered the, being able to balance yourself. And so the universe knows that you're ready for more. And that's all I want to say about balance, uh, actually about abundance. So. <laughs>